Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn. Today's deck is an oldie but a goodie. This is a deck that I originally created during Dominari United Standard, uh, which was a couple sets ago. Uh, it's It was crazy back then, and it's even better now. Uh, we're calling this Yoshin Cruise Missile, and this is built off of the bones of a deck called Yoshin Bulldozer, which I will link up above right now if you want to check out the original version. But this new version has some cards from the last two sets, Brothers War and Phyrexia All Will Be One, added to it that make it even better. And dare say I, this might be the fastest deck in Standard. It's definitely the fastest artifact deck based deck in standard that's for sure before we get to the deck make sure you like the video so that you can help us defeat the youtube algorithm it's a monster i've said this time and again but you can help us really push through every single like counts make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss a single crazy deck and um also this thursday every final thursday of every of every month the last thursday of every month which is this thursday on March 30th, we're doing Crack a Pack Community Night over on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn. Um, you can come challenge me to games in chat, and every time you beat me, you win a pack. I crack it open on stream, you win those cards, and I mail them out to you. So that's happening this Thursday, March 30th, and the last Thursday of every month we're going to do that. So make sure you come join in on the shenanigans, and uh, without further ado... Let's check out the deck. All right, so the core of this deck is based around my favorite aggro deck that I put together right after the release of Dominari United. Uh, and it centers around the use of artifacts um, and a couple notable ones in particular. So we're going to start off by talking about how this deck typically wins. Uh, one of the key components is getting Patchwork Automaton down on 2. This is 2 mana for a 1-1 one, one with Ward 2. Whenever you cast an Artifact spell, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Patchwork Automaton. This is incredibly important because if Automaton comes down on 2, a lot of times by the time they're able to kill Automaton with a 1-drop, costing them a total of 3 mana, your Automaton has outgrown the ability for that 1-drop to kill it. If it's a cut down, You've usually already got the automaton to being a 3-3, and they can't use cutdown on it anymore. Or if they have like a burn spell, usually you're outpacing their burn spell by a turn. So it's a 3-3 when they could shock it, and then it's a 4-4 when they could, um, you know, hit it, hit it with a lightning blast or whatever. So automaton is super key. It's really hard to deal with as long as it's in the kind of deck where you're following it up with constant streams of artifacts uh, and that's what this deck does and it can just get in for so much damage be really hard to kill and then when they finally do kill it it takes pretty much their entire turn and all of their mana to get rid of it and because this deck is so fast like them taking an entire turn off and only dealing with your automaton and then you getting to just vomit everything in your hand out onto the field still on your next turn it's just too much of a tempo uh, tempo gain for them to really compete with and to come back from. Um, now, a lot of the times, the way we win is sort of out of nowhere. We've got four Machiko's Reign of Truth, which on chapter one and two is going to buff up any creature we want by plus one, plus one for every artifact and enchantment we control. And a lot of cards in this deck are enchantments that give us artifacts, uh, which is awesome. I think every single card in this deck is an enchantment or an artifact. Uh, on chapter 3, this will flip into Portrait of Machiko and be a creature itself that is uh, has power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts and enchantments you control. The other important card for getting damage out of no nowhere is Yosha Declares War. Now this will come down and on chapter 1 give us an O2 Thopter artifact creature with flying, so it gives us two permanents for one card, both of which are permanents that are going to make Machiko's Reign of Truth add an extra plus one plus one onto something so it's it's like adding two potential triggers of that with just one card eventually when you do cast that uh chapter two we get to use this as a removal which is super important being able to fit removal into this deck without slowing down the rate at which we're tossing out aggro cards is super important so being able to just incidentally get removal on chapter two here and tap a bunch of our artifacts which we should have a plethora of and you know kill their most problematic creature is really valuable but then on turn three 
this card is contributing to our win condition in the same way that Machiko's Reign of Truth is. And it's not doing it to the same extent, but it's enough usually that it really matters and helps us win the game a turn earlier. So on chapter three, we get to turn any artifact into a base power and toughness 4-4 four, four until end of turn. If we're desperate, we can turn one of our other non-creature artifacts into an artifact creature to just swing in with on the ground. But what where this really helps is with things like Patchwork Automaton getting a bunch of counters but still having base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Uh, now it's a base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, but still has all the counters on it. So it's it gets buffed up essentially plus 3, plus 3 and can swing in. Same thing with the um, the Thopters, those O2 flying Thopters that couldn't swing in for any damage. Now they're 4-4 four, four flyers. Sometimes that's enough to just close out the game by that point. So very, very crucial, but there's a lot of other really good creatures at the one drop slot that this can affect as well. So if we start at the bottom of the curve here, one of the newer cards we've added to this deck is Swooping Lookout, and this card is perfect. One white mana for a 1-2 with Flying and Vigilance, and it is an artifact creature. So, not only does it support our artifact themes and help us go even wider with artifacts that are going to trigger things like Machiko's Reign of Truth, but this is a perfect platform to just pile buffs on and just evasively get through for the damage we need. And a lot of times we can just get through for 9, 10, 11 damage out of nowhere, the opponent doesn't see it coming with just this one two guy because we just play a reign of truth when we're super wide with artifacts buff it up and just swing in and win it comes out of nowhere which is why we're calling this yoshin cruise missile and with swooping lookout around now we have just enough flyers to really make that consistent before we could get the job done uh without swooping lookout by using like the thopter token or by using our next one drop I want to talk about, which is Goldhound. Now, this isn't actually a flyer, but it does have First Strike and Menace, so it is kind of tricky to block. If we buff this up with a Machiko's Reign of Truth and swing in, they have to block with two creatures, and most likely both of those creatures are going to die, and our Goldhound won't. Also, if we're in a jam and need mana, we can sacrifice the Goldhound for mana, which is a nice bonus. Um, but the first strike in Menace is really good, coupled with one of our one ofs that we have in this deck, along with Swooping Lookout having Flying and Vigilance. Goldhound has first strike in Menace. We have one copy of Eater of Virtue. Now it's legendary, so I don't feel comfortable putting more than one. But when you get just the one, oh, it feels so good. One mana for an equipment. Whenever a equipped creature dies, you exile the, equip the equipped creature. When you equip the Eater of Virtue. You give equip creature plus two plus oh and it equips for only one mana so it's really easy to just use this on curve and not have it slow down your tempo too much but if it's equipped to a swooping lookout or a gold hound when it dies what happens is that creature gets exiled and now the eater of virtue gets those abilities to whatever you equip it to next so in Goldhound's case, you're going to be able to give your Eater of, Eater of Virtue first strike and menace to whatever it's going to equip next. And with Swooping Lookout's case, if they kill the swoop, Swooping Lookout, then your Eater of Virtue is going to get Flying and Vigilance, and you can give that Flying and Vigilance to any creature you want. So it's incredibly valuable with these two one-drops, with this Eater of Virtue. But even if you don't get those one-drops, just the plus two power off a one-drop artifact that equips for one is really good on its own. So one copy there. We've also got four copies of Kamado Faces Kakazan because this is the perfect one drop. It's going to come down, do a little bit of incidental damage, give us the ability to play our Patchwork Automaton on two and have it already start with a counter on it because of chapter two of Kamano. And then on chapter three, it's going to flip into another creature and help us apply more pressure. But what's also important here is it counts as an enchantment. And again, Machiko's Reign of Truth triggers with artifacts and enchantments. So it's something that we have in the deck that, even though it doesn't necessarily support the artifact theme, it still fits in and synergizes with exactly what the deck wants to do, and doesn't slow down things like Machiko's Reign of Truth, which is really, really nice. We've also got two rabbit batteries. We only really ever want one, so we don't need more than two in here. Uh, but if we can get one rabbit battery down, sometimes it's really powerful. We're, we're able to attack with, you know, a decently sized automaton early, or we're able to let a Machiko's Reign of Truth flip into Portrait of Machiko and immediately attach the Rabbit Battery to it and swing in with it for huge damage that turn instead of having to wait a turn cycle. 
but also the rabbit battery just being a one drop artifact for all of our artifact synergies and being something that can just get in for a point of damage early in the game the turn you play it uh, a lot of extra incidental value packed into this card and two copies i think is perfect I have kind of the same feelings about Reinforced Ronin. This is another one drop that swings in for two with haste, um, but it comes back to your hand at end of turn. And in some ways, that's going to be helpful. We can keep playing this every single turn, adding a counter to Patchwork Automaton every single time, which is awesome. It helps Patchwork Automaton get really big really quick while swinging in for damage every turn. Um, but we don't want too many of these clogging up our hand. We want to make sure the majority of what we're playing are artifacts that are stick on the field, for our artifact synergies like reign of truth um so i think two copies of this is just perfect we can also channel it away to draw a card later in the game if we just need that key spell to finish out the game uh for removal we've got four voltage surges this is obviously perfect because not only can we shock something early but if we want to just sacrifice one of our artifacts of which we have plenty of options we can do four to whatever we want for still only one mana and instant speed so it works perfectly in this deck and it synergizes nicely and goes along with our four copies of Yosha Declares War to give us a nice eight pieces of removal as a package, which is a lot if you think about it when you consider the four of them are coming from Yosha Declares War, which is a piece that's synergizing with our aggro uh, and with what, what the deck's trying to do and not slowing it down. So it's, it's kind of like we're only using up four slots in the deck to have eight pieces of removal, which is really, really cool. Um, we've also got four copies of Mishra's Research Desk and four copies of Experimental Synthesizer. Now, both of these cards are giving us the fuel we need to just keep pushing through. When an aggro deck like this would normally run out of gas, we just never run out of gas. We're finding that key card we need with the Research Desk, and then later in the game when we're out of gas completely, we are, we are unearthing this to do it again. And it's counting as an artifact when it's on the field for all of our synergies. Same thing with Synthesizer. Synthesizer is going to come down on curve, let us find what we need uh, earlier and get it out there, get us extra value, and then depending on the situation, we can sack the Synthesizer to a Voltage Surge so that we can get another card off of it for a lot cheaper and do four damage to a creature in the process, or if we really need another body, sometimes we're going to sacrifice this for the three mana itself, make the 2-2 two -two Samurai, and sometimes when we do that, we're going to have a rabbit battery in place so we can immediately equip that Samurai and swing in. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of value baked into those cards there, and it synergizes with the deck just really, really well. You would think an aggro deck just doesn't have enough space in it for this much card draw, but because everything is so cheap, we just vomit everything out, and go ham and we absolutely have the, the space for them and it just it makes it so we never run out of gas and it's really pretty crazy uh we've also got as a one of just one screlv i uh, considered adding more but with it being legendary i think one is is right here uh and this is just a good way of getting in for extra damage or protecting our pieces um, if we get something bigger like an automaton with a bunch of counters or a key flyer that's just going to win the game for us next turn, we can make sure and keep Skrelv up and protect it. But we also get the ability, for example, to like, say we have a big Patrick automaton or one of our other creatures is, uh, you know, boosted up with Reign of Truth or something like that. We can actually tap Skrelv to give our big creature the ability to not be blocked by a certain color. And sometimes that lets it just not be blocked at all and we can just swing in for the win. So just one copy of Skrelv here I think is perfect. We've also got one Myrix in the mana base because again, when we run out of uh, run out of gas, we can at least make Phyrexian Might tokens. Those are gonna give us just a little bit of extra aggression and they're gonna count as more artifacts on the field for all of our synergies. And then we've also got one copy of Mycosynth Gardens. And this is gonna help us a little later in the game by maybe making it so that our pain lands don't necessarily have to ping us in order for us to make the color we want because it filters. But the main use here is we can turn this into a copy of any artifact we want. So a lot of times, if we're about to vomit out a handful of artifacts, we can maybe make another copy of the Patchwork Automaton. Or if we're desperate for card advantage, we could make a copy of a Mishra's Research Desk or a Synthesizer. Uh, there's a lot of value we can get off the gardens. Uh, just extra value later in the game from something that would otherwise just be a land. And then in the mana base, we have to be very careful because we have so many one drops. 
we have to make sure we have enough red mana and we also have to make sure we have enough enough white mana so having as many things that can tap for two colors as possible is kind of important we have four battlefield forges four sundown passes i added just one thron portal because i think it makes just enough of a difference having just that ninth dual land that can be red or white depending on the situation uh when it comes down uh, we don't want too many of these because we don't want too many pain uh pain lands and this is going to ping us every time we use it uh, even if it's later in the game where we would just want to use it for colorless, we don't get that option with Thrawn Portal. So just one, I think, really helps fix our mana in a deck like this that has a ton of one drops that you have to have colored mana for. And then we've got one Sokens in, one Iganjo, uh, and then one Plains and four Mountains. And I think this is just the perfect amount of mana. And the deck is just crazy. It's It's been steamrolling. It's been winning faster than any deck I've played in a long time. You guys will see. I think we didn't lose a single game while I was recording finish uh, footage for these matches, which is kind of absurd. But uh, I'm not going to hold you guys up anymore. We're going to get right to the games. Let's check them out. All right. Two red sources. I think we can keep it because of Kamano. Mountain Kamano. Worst case scenario, we'll play a uh, synthesizer before playing a land. Looks like that is what we're doing. And with the land. Do we play another synthesizer? Probably not. Pass the turn. That is some bad luck. All right, we will lead with Synthesizer here. Play the Ganjo. Swing. We get an Abraid. We'll play Skrell. Mishra's research desk and pass the turn. Probably gonna play the synthesizer first into a reign of truth. But it depends what we hit off the synthesizer. Eater of virtues. I'll take it. I guess we'll just go for this. He might have removal. Guess he doesn't. We'll smack for eight. Soul transfer. It's obvious we we're we we're gonna kill him, so I think we start with the research desk. See what we can hit. Goldhound. Honestly, with Eater of Virtue in play, Murex might be might not be so bad. But now nah, we'll go for Gold Goldhound. That's fine. Play that. Play that. Equip this to one of them. And pass the turn. I think we'll hold on to Sokens in here. Because we can probably get in for a last few points of damage with that. Chapter 2. Hmm. I assume he finds a sweeper. That's what I assume. Start by swinging. I think we'll go research desk. We want to hold on to as much as we can in case we found the sweeper. So we'll just set ourselves up for next turn. Uh, I guess we'll go with Swoop and Lookout. And we'll end the turn. Brotherhood's End. I mean, 
that's not so bad. Thing is, we can sew Kenzin and then equip the Eater of Virtue. And I think that's what we're gonna do. And then smack in for the win. Nice and clean. Alright. Alright, this hand looks a little dangerous to keep because it's got two pain lands in it, but we're gonna give it a go. Start with the forge and play a swooping lookout. Alright, we'll go forge again. We could play and equip the eater and swing in for three. I think it's better to get some value on the field though. So let's go with Yosha Declares War. Chapter one. And then smack him for one. Now we've got two flyers. If either one survives, we can equip them with the eater. We can target them with chapter three of Yosha Declares War. Got an ossification. Submit zero. Sundown pass. Eater of virtue. Hmm. Do it like this. We'd like to incentivize him taking out the token. And if he doesn't, we don't have to pay the equipment cost again. Okay, he's not even gonna ossify anyway. He's just gonna restoration of the Anjo. Das ist fine. See what we hit with the research desk. Yoshi declares war, that's fine. Seven, eight, nine. We could technically play Yoshi declares war and hit for 12 if we wanted to. But we'd be, we'd be wasting a little bit of it. So I think we're just gonna play it on chapter one. And set ourselves up for next turn. Opponent is down to seven. It's gonna bring that ossification into play on what? Swooping lookout? That's fine great here is it still stays in play and counts as an artifact. Oh, because he used, he used Planar Disruption, so he's going to hit the token with the ossification. That makes sense. Wait. He wasted his Planar Disruption? That's wild. That is absolutely wild. Um, I guess we'll just swing in for a bunch of damage. him at one hold up voltage surge in case he plays a blocker and put our ronins back in our hand i don't think he can come back at just one life here if he can i'll hold the power to him wedding announcement that's not going to be enough how do you deal with the flyer another ossification the wrong thing. He should have picked the equipment. Oh no. You can only target a creature of Planeswalker. Ignore what I said. We're gonna sack the token. Kill the architect. 
and then... We could have just killed him with Kamano, or either of our hasty guys. Let's see. Play Sundown Pass tapped on one. Murex into Automaton on two. And then we can go Rabbit Battery Swooping Lookout on three. Swing with a 3-3 three, three Automaton and possibly a 1-1 one, one Rabbit Battery and follow it up with a Reign of Truth. That seems really good. It's a bummer we can't play anything on one, but... The rest of how we care about, I think, really makes up for it. He plays a Bank Buster. Hmm. I wonder if we should just play a 1-drop and a Kamano rather than the Automaton. I'm gonna do it to get use of that colored mana. And we're gonna pick the Rabbit Battery so we can swing in immediately. And if we get lucky and top deck a land, we can play Automaton and equip the battery to it. Thinking hard. I think it's probably better in a vacuum to kill the Kamano. Alright, we'll do this. We'll do this. Pass the turn. Things are looking pretty crazy. Should be able to go swooping lookout. We would need another white source to go swooping lookout Machiko's Reign of Truth. Hey, there it is. Wow, this is gonna be a turn, guys. We just have so much right here. desk. Look out. Reign of Truth. S give something plus six. I think we'll actually go for etching. So he can't trade with anything, even if he crews the bank cluster. us a card and that's good for us we're gonna give another plus six plus six next turn to whatever we want this time it's probably gonna be a lookout he needs to kill the automaton but he can't deck's just too fast <laughs> it's just too fast Lauren can't kill the automaton. Kills that. Makes sense. Alright, we're gonna start with the synthesizer here. Let's see what we can hit. Reinforced Ronin. Well, we're gonna start by cracking the research desk. Let's see what we can get off of that. But we're probably just playing the Ronin in the lookout. Yeah, we'll play this next turn. If we just swing in, he's gonna be able to eat something with the Bank Buster. So I think we just do this. We want to keep as many artifacts on the field as we can, because next turn we just go off with Reign of Truth. I 
thinking hard about how to deal with this. If he had a sweeper, that would be nice. He does not. He's gonna ossification on the automaton. Takes the entire turn for him to get rid of that. Which is very good for us. Very, very good. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna go Gold Hound. Roman. Reign of Truth. I mean, we could very easily hit for 10 here by targeting a lookout. But I think keeping artifacts around might be better. Nah, we'll just hit the lookout. And then we'll swing with everybody. He's going to have to block at least one of them. Really surprised he didn't crew the bank cluster. He must have thought we had a trick. Oh, he drew us another reign of truth. It's a bad idea. Lay down arms one of them. Rough. He knows he needs to find an answer. Ossification isn't enough. Oh yeah. Big wins. Big, big wins. Alright. We do not really have any white sources other than Thrawn Portal, which is kind of a bummer. We do have our Skrelv though. Let's try it. Let's keep seven. Let's play Thrawn Portal for white. And start with the Skrelv. Why not? Right, hits it with a whisper. We're gonna go Kamano. And research desk. We'll hold on to the lookout to play on chapter two of Kamano. Spell dancer. That's fine. Start with Synthesizer. Let's see what we hit. Another swooping lookout. Oh, I guess we'll just play both of them. Now we just need to race at this point. Spell Dancer comes in, prologued Phyresis. Sure. Patchwork Automaton. It's a little bit late. Let's uh, start by seeing what we have off of the research desk. Gold Hound or Rabbit Battery. Probably rabbit battery. That's what we want. We'll play the patchwork automaton. Oh, we used up our two red. That was a mistake. That means we're going to have to play the rabbit battery next turn.
whispers the automaton, but it takes its whole turn. So I'm not super worried about it. Alright, I think we start. Here's what we're gonna do. Blow this up. Let's see what we get. Sundown Pass. Play the Rabbit Battery. And then we're going to equip the Rabbit Battery to the new Samurai. And then we're going to swing for 8. Put them at 6. And we've got Lethal on board. Any scoops? Uh, this looks like a great hand. We can Kamano on 1. Tomaton on 2. And get down Skrelv and Yosha Declares War on 3. And then hopefully by the time he can actually kill the Automaton, our Skrelv is online. That sounds good. Red. Come on up. Alright, let's see what he's got. Looks like he's playing 5 color, potentially. Play the automaton here. Next turn is looking pretty gnarly. Fight rigging. Sure. So he's going to play something with high power next turn. So you can play the thing off fight rigging right away. We need to keep that in mind. Skrelv's coming down no matter what. We'll go Rabbit Battery. Swooping Lookout. And then we'll just smash. Put him at 11. Alright, here's his big turn. Is it enough to turn the game around? He's got something under fight rigging. He's probably going to end up playing for free. Alright. Puts a counter on the shakedown heavy. Ooh, he's got a Traxa. That does make things tricky for us. Does make things tricky for us. Five, six, seven, eight. We're really close to just winning. Really, really close. Six, seven, eight, nine. My god, we're so close. We're so close, it's ridiculous. Just trying to think of how to do it. I guess we'll save the Yosha Declares War. Black. And swing in seven unblockable. Put him at four. End the turn. Now, he is going to gain seven off of Atraxa here. Which means he'll go up to 11, but I think we can do 11 next turn. Oh, he'll gain eight. So he'll go up to 12. 
Unless we can somehow block and then sacrifice our blocker. Which, unfortunately, we can't do. We need to try to hit... Rain and Machiko. That's what we need. Uh, let's crack this. And see what we can get. Voltage Surge and a Murex. I guess we'll take the Voltage Surge. <sighs> we can get this to 8. 9. Damn. Oh, we can do Yoshi Declares War, right? So, 8... 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we win. Here we go. Swooping lookout. Yosha declares war. Chapter 3. Target the automaton. It's an 11, 11. Pay 2 life, go to 2. Make it unblockable, buy black. Swing in for 11. Victory! Ha ha! That was awesome. Yes, yes, I did have fun. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. We're working hard to get to 2,000 subscribers now because we blew right past 1,000. So make sure you like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like more magic death pets, that's somewhere over there. And if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately, that's somewhere over there. Also, subscribe, circle below, do all the things.